Welcome to Tech Talk, your program for technology news, innovators, expertise, and thought leaders. And today, we're at the EVC Center, where we get to talk to the guys behind the e-mobility program in Zimbabwe. But before we do that, let's get into history and trivia. Hello, and welcome to the first segment of Tech Talk, your tech survey program. Today, we are devolving into the intriguing history of electric vehicles, EVs. It's easy to forget, as we experience modern electric vehicles today, that the golden age of electric vehicles as we continue to explore electric mobility in Zimbabwe, only on Tech Talk. As you know, we are always looking for technology and innovation in and around Zimbabwe. And today, we are at the home of Zimbabwe's fully electric vehicles. And we're going to talk to some of the people behind this whole innovation to see if it is a probable solution for Zimbabwe. So right about now, we are going inside to talk to the manager who is responsible for everything and get a talk. Maybe we get a little... Let's get back to finding the manager. So I want you to briefly explain what your company is all about and, uh, and the vehicles that are in the market right now. We do combustion-free electric vehicles. We are the first company to introduce self-charging electric vehicles in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. We are the first company again to introduce uh, electric vehicles in Zimbabwe. We are also the first company in Africa to have an EV dedicated showroom in Africa. And we, so far in Zimbabwe, we have done quite a number of models. We, one of the top sellers is the BYD E6 model. Uh, that one can take you up to 500 kilometers on a single charge. And for you to travel, you simply need probably four to five dollars worth of electricity, which means traveling it's as good as, it's, it's as cheap as one cent per kilometer. Traveling, traveling free. You are traveling for free oh, and you are nice. not polluting the environment. Oh, nice. So those, like the E6 is one of the models that you have imported so far. Sure. So the E6 is, is just one of the models, but we also have the T3. That's also a good panel van that you have with a payload of about 800 kgs. In terms of payload, you can travel 300 kilometers on a single charge. We also introduced the Dairy Auto, which is a solar electric vehicle. It's, it's a wonder for our market. Basically, so many advantages that are associated with electric vehicles. The first and foremost one is you are promoting green uh, renewable energy. With these vehicles, you don't pollute. That's why you find there is no exhaust on these vehicles. What it means is you are driving and you are not polluting to the uh, environment. And as you are aware, you realize that uh, transport sector is the second most polluting uh, division, according to the recent statistics that we have in our country, which accounts for about 17% of emissions into the atmosphere. So by substituting most of the vehicles on the road with the electric vehicle, it means we have cut down on our emissions. And these emissions, they are coming out as a negative cost because we now have the El Nino effect. It's all because of global warming. So by adopting these electric vehicles, we have done good to the environment and you, you also do good to yourself in terms of cost. You save a lot of money in terms of fuel. You also tend to save in terms of service cost. There is very few uh, service that is required for these vehicles. So basically they are cheap to run, cheap to maintain. Um, then again, when we look at uh, electric vehicles, they are of, uh, good for the market and also for the road users because you have less time under the car. These vehicles only has an electric motor and a, and a battery, so there are only two moving components. So yeah, it makes sense. Little to less uh, service maintenance and everything. Sure, sure, oh, definitely. And less challenges because we only yeah, we have removed the gearbox challenges for uh -huh. you. We have removed the engine uh, associated challenges for you. Uh -huh. We have also removed the fuel uh, challenges for you. According to stats right now, we know Africa as a whole, we're having power cut, power outages and everything, and Zimbabwe happens to be one of the victims of those. Mm -hmm. How does that transpire into the whole system of bringing electric vehicles into Zimbabwe? What we have done, because we notice we wouldn't want to burden mm -hmm. the national grid 
by when you are charging your vehicles. Mm -hmm. So what we have done, we have now introduced what we call solar powered electric chargers. So with this, so with these ones, we put a carport kind of a facility mm -hmm. that will then allow you to harness power from the sun. And Zimbabwe is plenty of sunshine. I think we have over eight hours mm -hmm. of sunshine. You then get the power from the sun. You harness it, then you charge your electric vehicle. So there's now less need now to focus on or to get power from the national grid. So how many systems have you been running on sun right now? Like how many cars do run on sun that you have on board? Well, there are quite a number. There are quite a number. So far, we will be installing some in, in, in Victoria Falls. In Victoria Falls? Sure. Ah, nice. Because we have this mandate to say, we will, let's make Vic Falls uh, a clean east city. So we, I think we are just stepping into that vision of the Second Republic and say, let's just take it and let's put uh, solar charging infrastructure within Victoria Falls Airport. So let's say I buy one for myself, in which I am going to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> let's see about that. <laughs> I'm going to buy one, right? Sure, thank you. And then, so, like, people have been having these questions. Where are the batteries located? Some people even have the assumption that the batteries are small little cells that are always packed inside the car. You want to know, where do you put these batteries? What do they look like? So these batteries, they are underneath the seats, mm -hmm. and they are equally distributed just under the driver's seat to the back of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. That's why you realize electric vehicles have so much stability on them, because the weight is evenly spread acro across the vehicle. Then let me tell you a secret about these lithium batteries. Mm -hmm. One thing uh, that makes lithium batteries or EVs a thing for Zimbabwe is that Zimbabwe is one of the leading uh, producer of lithium in the world, mm -hmm. and we have plenty of it. Now, with having the battery as the most expensive single component of these vehicles, it means if we can produce this these batteries in Zimbabwe, we are going to less the cost of the total cost of ownership for an EV by probably around 15 to 20 percent. So once we manufacture these batteries locally, like what the Second Republic is pushing, to have a plant that manufactures these batteries locally, mm -hmm. what it means for us now is means these electric vehicles are going to be cheaper for us, and we are also going to tap into the market of exporting these vehicles, these batteries, to the rest of the world. Oh, that's beautiful. So before we take... Uh one of these cars for a test drive, as mm -hmm. I had approached you. <laughs> and I'm glad that you said sure, yes in your sure, heart. Sure, 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 definitely. Uh, I want to ask, the challenges in every situation, even building a system and everything, mm -hmm. you know, people might be afraid of getting electricity shocked or blowing up in the car. They not really trust you with it. Mm -hmm. How are you sure these things are, these cars are very safe? Well, thank you for that question, and that's one of the questions that everyone has in mind, including the viewers that are watching us right now. So, I always ask this question, and maybe allow me to ask you this question. Mm -hmm. What's more safer to have a battery, a lithium battery, mm -hmm. underneath your seat, or to have a tank of 60 liters filled with uh, fuel, which is petrol, which is very explosive, and once exposed to smoke, can Ben. Yeah, so I mean, these these vehicles are uh, they have been tested and they are very efficient. They are very safe. And the beauty of this electric vehicle is once you hit an impact, once the vehicle senses an impact, it disengages every uh, protocol that relates to electricity. So what it means, you become safe. Unlike a combustion vehicle, where when you have an accident, what it means now is the engine will still run until you switch it off. This one, they automatically get into that uh, safe zone. Then they put down every protocol regarding uh, transmission of power. So these ones are basically safe. Then they are also they also being tested under different conditions. They are also being tested under different climates. And guess what? They did well. And these vehicles are oh, safe to use. Oh, nice. So without wasting much of your time, guys, we want to get to test any of any of these vehicles right here so we need to go with the manager sit in the car and get to test we don't talk about the cars without looking at it see what's happening in the cars where are the batteries located and everything and then the engine facility it doesn't have a, it doesn't have an engine it's a, it does a, a no motor engine. right electric motor electric <laughs> i'm used to motor. engine cars That's guys <laughs> anyways guys let's go test the cars and see what's up So I had to take it around, just take a look, understand the car, get a feel, and feel the throttle, the brakings, and there's a whole lot to it that I had to understand before I take it on the road, because remember, this is an electric motor. Of 
course, the road that I want to pick for testing a car that is as brand new as this one uh, is a road that has less traffic, which is quite long, I guess, and also that is more suitable for the vehicle. What other road would I pick other than the airport road? And check me out, I'm cruising. That is 280 I'm playing. It goes up to 100. <laughs> Well, as compared to, you know, uh, ordinary fuel vehicles that you have to be completely, like, constantly checking your gauge on where I am in fuel, this one will tell you how much charge you have to travel where you want to go. And you would actually know how much of power or battery that I have uh, to last my travel. So same as, like, using a mobile device, it tell you how many hours you've got using the phone.